the journey very hope. Why don't you stammer when you shout? Tembi asked him as they sat on the bench under the delicately flowering pepper tree. Johan's lips brushed against the thin beaded braids as she turned her head away from him. I refuse to kiss a boy who stutters. And do we really want to spoil a lovely friendship by complicating it? He could see from the way her lips twitched that she was trying hard not to smile. But, but, but that's the discrimination, he laughed. And yet he clenched his fists so that the nails cut into his palms. I also don't st stammer when I sing. Life's not a musical. When you are able to whisper to me without stammering, whisper sweet nothings, then you can kiss me. Tembi opened his fist and squeezed his hand gently. The bell rang. During maths, he imagined he could still catch the sweet scent of her braids, but her cruelty cut into his heart. He failed to understand it. Despite her initial mistrust, Johan had been warm and friendly to her ever since she arrived at the school. Her parents lived far away and she was a boarder. He sensed her loneliness. He asked his parents to invite her to Sunday lunch. Tembi and his mother had hit it off well and she became a regular visitor. At school, Johanna had kept his ear to the ground. Nobody really said offensive things to her, but the expression in their eyes wounded more than words could have. Early on in life, Johanna had learned to read this quiet language from the time he knew that his speech was different to that of other children. His understanding of this language drew him close to Tembi and made him feel protective towards her. Not that she had ever really needed protection. She was cheeky and sharp and soon became chairperson of the debating society. Although her Afrikaans pronunciation was sometimes strange, her English was perfect. And when someone made her really angry, she let off steam in Setswana, which few people at the school understood. Tembi was clever, especially in science and biology. She wanted to be a doctor, like her father. She wanted to do things, make a difference. Politicians were a breed she disliked. They were word peddlers, she scoffed. And words are cheap. Politicians use them to pull the wool over people's eyes. Yet, Johanna had caught her out on the day of President Mandela's inauguration. He, Tembi, and a few other friends had watched TV at his parents' house. Tembi had joined the group in hooting with laughter at the strange fashions and headdresses the VIP guests had sported. Marika de Clark, they agreed, looked a little like Meryl Streep in Out of Africa, and everybody wondered why the president's daughter hid under such a big hat. Johanna had joined the chorus of gentle mockery, but various speakers caught his attention. They speak so fluently. Their words pour like cream from a jug, he had thought. These commentators and the Imbongi who gushes in a singing tone. When Distem and Nkosi Sikileli Africa were played and the cannon salute sounded while President Mandela held his fist high against his chest, Johan had glanced at Tembi and saw her wipe away some tears. He had nudged her. I thought they were all who word peddlers, Suka, she had said with a sweeping gesture of her hand. Later, her only defense had been, you also shed a tear, Burki. The second last period was English, while Miss Cook explained to the class how timeless Shakespeare was and how the musical West Side Story was Romeo and Juliet in a contemporary setting, a note landed on Johan's desk. See you on the rugby field after school, Tembi. Johan tried to catch her eye, but she was listening intently to Miss Cook. He couldn't speak to her during the last period either. But when he got to the rugby field, Tembi was waiting for him. If you can shout without a stammer, you should also be able to speak and whisper fluently she said i have a plan you go to one set of goalposts i go to the other we walk slowly towards each other at first you'll have to shout so that i can hear you then as you approach me you tone down until you speak and eventually whisper Johan exploded you can all go jump in the bloody lake he shouted i've been trying for years speech therapists and shrinks since i've been this high on the phone i struggle orals are a nightmare in primary school the kids used to laugh at me always looked at me as though i was a moron everybody in the family always gave advice give him a good scrap put pebbles in his mouth make him sing i've had it do you hear i've had it and now you he saw Tembi extending her hand towards him, but she hesitated and said softly, Do you really think I don't understand? That I don't know how it feels? She turned and walked away.
when she was through the gate and had disappeared around the corner, Johann roared and hurled stones at the posts. The following day, it was Johann's turn to send a note. After school, Tembi waited on the rugby field. In the weeks that followed, Johann's voice was frequently hoarse. Only he and Tembi knew the reason. When the pepper tree flourished its red berries, they no longer started on opposite ends of the field. Johan no longer shouted. He merely spoke loudly. Occasionally, when he grew too excited about his progress, he stumbled over his words. Then Tembi would stop him, and sometimes he lost heart because the journey took so long. And then, one afternoon, shortly before the end of the term, they had moved so close to one another that Johan had to whisper. He stood still. She could smell the peppermint on his breath. They smiled and both burst out laughing. They ran around with their arms in the air. He shouted. She ululated. When they were tired, he walked up to her. Out of breath, he whispered. He leaned towards her. She did not turn her head away again.